James Baldwin, If Beale Street Could Talk, Chapter 1. We're starting on page 3. I look at myself in the mirror. I know that I was christened Clementine, and so it would make sense if people called me Clem, or even, come to think of it, Clementine, since that's my name. But they don't. People call me Tish. I guess that makes sense, too. I'm tired, and I'm beginning to think that maybe everything that happens makes sense. Like, if it didn't make sense, how could it happen? But that's really a terrible thought. It can only come out of trouble, trouble that doesn't make sense. Today I went to see Fani. That's not his name, either. He was christened Alonzo, and it might make sense if people called him Lonnie, but no, we've always called him Fani. Alonzo Hunt, that's his name. I've known him all my life, and I hope I'll always know him, but I only call him Alonzo. One, I have to break down some really heavy shit to him. Today I said, Alonzo, and he looked at me, that quickening look he has when I call him by his name. He's in jail, so where we were, I was sitting on a bench in front of a board, and he was sitting on a bench in front of a board, and we were facing each other through a wall of glass between us. You can't hear anything through this glass, and so you both have a little telephone. You have to talk through that. I don't know why people always look down when they talk through a telephone, but they always do. You have to remember to look up at the person you're talking to. I always remember now because he's in jail, and I love his eyes, and every time I see him, I'm afraid I'll never see him again. So I pick up the phone as soon as I get there, and I just hold it, and I keep looking up at him. So when I said, Alonzo, he looked down, and then he looked up, and he smiled, and he held the phone, and he waited. I hope that nobody has ever had to look at anybody they love through glass. And I didn't say it the way I meant to say it. I meant to say it in a very offhand way so he wouldn't be too upset. So he'd understand that I was saying it without any kind of accusation in my heart. You see, I know him. He's very proud and he worries a lot. And when I think about it, I know he doesn't. That he's the biggest reason he's in jail. He worries too much already. I don't want him to worry about me. In fact, I didn't want to say what I had to say, but I knew I had to say it. He had to know. And I thought, too, that when he got over being worried, when he was lying by himself at night, when he was all by himself in that very deepest part of himself, maybe when he thought about it, he'd be glad. And that might help him. I said, Alonzo, we're going to have a baby. I looked at him. I know I smiled. His face looked as though it were plunging into water. I couldn't touch him. I wanted so to touch him. I smiled again and my hands got wet on the phone. And then for a moment, I couldn't see him at all. And I shook my head and my face was wet and I said, I'm glad. I'm glad. Don't you worry. I'm glad. But he was far away from me now, all by himself. I waited for him to come back. I could see it flash across his face. My baby? I knew that he would think that. I don't mean that he doubted me, but a man thinks that. And for those few seconds while he was out there by himself, Away from me, the baby was the only real thing in the world. More real than the prison, more real than me. I should have said already, we're not married. That means more to him than it does to me. But I understand how he feels. We were going to get married, but then he went to jail. 
Fani is 22. I am 19. He asked the ridiculous question, are you sure? No, I ain't sure. I'm just trying to mess with your mind. Then he grinned. He grinned because then he knew. What we gonna do? He asked me, just like a little boy. Well, we ain't going to drown it, so I guess we'll have to raise it. Fonny threw back his head and laughed. He laughed till tears come down his face. So then I felt that the first part that I'd been so frightened of would be all right. Did you tell Frank, he asked me. Frank is his father. I said, not yet. You tell your folks? Not yet, but don't worry about them. I just wanted to tell you first. Well, he said, I guess that makes sense. A baby. He looked at me, then he looked down. What are you going to do for real? I'm going to do just like I've been doing. I'll work up to just about the last month, and then Mama and Sis will take care for me. You ain't going to worry, and anyway, we have you out of here before then. You sure about that? With his little smile? Of course I'm sure about that. I'm always sure about that. I knew what he was thinking, but I can't let myself think about it. Not now, watching him, I must be sure. The man came up behind Fanny, and it was time to go. Fanny smiled and raised his fist, like always, and I raised mine, and he stood up. I'm always kind of surprised when I see him in here at how tall he is. Of course he's lost weight, and that may have him seem taller. He turned around and went through the door, and the door closed behind him. I felt dizzy. I hadn't eaten much all day, and now it was getting late. I walked out to cross these big, wide quarters I've come to hate, quarters wider than all the Sahara Desert. The Sahara is never empty. These corridors are never empty. If you cross the Sahara and you fall, by and by, vultures circle around you, smelling, sensing your death, they circle. 